Hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, how y'all doing? Uh, we're going to get into this one today, chapter four of the Nazarene New Testament from the Holy Megillah, um, Nazarene Bible of the Essene Way. Uh, this is a, the prophecy of Malachi fulfilled. So like two videos back, I did the prophecy of Malachi. And this is um, now, and that's the Old Testament. Malachi is from the Old Testament of the Holy Megillah and the Old Testament of the King James Version. It's the final book in the Old Testament. So, um, and it prophesied about the coming of the messenger, uh, Elijah. And in this Holy Megillah, it used the wording reincarnation. And that's a big deal uh, because back a few, few years back, is what sent sent me on the rabbit hole was um, I was watching something I can't remember what it was but the guy mentioned that reincarnation the the practice the the teachings and all of that was removed out of the Bible uh, sometime in the 1500s so that struck a nerve with me because that would have been that was before the King James version. So the, the King James Version was, if, if you don't know, the original was, the, the translation was done in 1611. Um, they do have a 1611 Bible that reads a little different than the um, AV and the RV. So I would advise you to look that up, look up the 1611 to get one of the, ori the, the, one of the original translations. Because I remember there's a Gideon Bible and some other ones before 1611. I don't remember the exact dates, but um, this video might turn out long because I wanna read this. And I also wanna shed some light on the reincarnation of Elijah as John the Baptist and how the Megillah words, trans the Megillah wording um, might be offensive. But if you're not familiar with the stories in the original King James version, then you you may be offended by the the wording um, and not understand. But I wanted to go and show you the book of Malachi real quick in the um, King James Version and read to you how it described the coming of Elijah and how and the words it used. So here we are, Malachi, King James Version. Chapter 4 is where it's at. Um, behold. No, 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 no. I'm going to go to chapter 3 first because that's where um, it says, Behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord of whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. So that's chapter three, verse one. And then I would advise you guys to go read the whole thing, especially if you're watching the Malachi prophecy videos so you can see what the difference is, like refresh yourself. Cause I, I had to do this too. I, this was taking me so long to get this video up as I went back and read the book of Malachi and tried to, to do the side by side. So that's what I'm just showing you now. This is chapter four, verse, um, five where it actually says elijah behold i will send you elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the lord so although the king james did not use the word reincarnation it did not mean that if you're familiar with elijah and the books of the old testament that his life and story and all of that is recorded in you'll know about his transition and that he was no longer alive so it was suggesting to us maybe they didn't have that word in the translation but it's suggesting that elijah would come back so i mean you know everybody has their own perception of things and their own um what you call it but what i wanted to show you now is I want to show you something that I'm going to put at the end of the video. So if you want to just see that part, this is called 
I uh, hope everyone that's watching this is familiar with it. If it's not, you want to go online and look for this book, The Gospel of the Holy Twelve. It's translated from the original Aramaic, okay? Um, I want to read this um, introduction to you uh, because it's... Uh, It's very important. This was a book um, of the, uh, I don't even know how to explain it, but you guys need to go and find this book online. It, this one should be easy. I'll try to put a link in under the video so you can click on it. It's a download. You would, you want to read it because it was, a, it was written in Aramaic. And um, the New Testament that we have was originally written in Greek. So it may be that the Greek New Testament was translated from this original Aramaic that we have into Greek and then into English. And so we're going to take it when you when you um, when you find something like this, you realize that there's um, this was this was from Aramaic to English. So we may have 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 a it may it may read different because we left out the Greek in the middle, like we have the New Testament written in Greek in our Bibles. Okay, and there were the the there it's on record that um, I did a little research for you guys. Um but that he spoke mostly Aramaic and, the, and that was the language of his hometown and the surrounding villages. So if anybody was actually doing any scribing and saying when they were listening to him talk, I mean, like me, like you, everybody, right? You guys, you might find a lecture, everybody grabs a pen and a paper to take notes, you know? You would, those notes would have been taken in Aramaic because he was speaking in Aramaic Maybe there might have been travelers, like, you know, news reporters. They went over from, they came from Greece or whatever, and they spoke Greek. So they wrote down uh, what he was saying in their Greek and stuff. And if you know anything about languages, um, there there's, could be, um, depending on whether you're trying to translate it or transliterate it, what's, your, what's the purpose of the text, it matters because you, you may not really care that. Um, the definitions of what, what's being said. You may just want it to be able to be read versus where you're trying to um, define what was being said. I don't know, but I'm started. This is already 10 minutes, so I'm just going to actually go back to the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, and I want to read to you guys where a, a little footnote about this is Christ in this one his name is spelled with an I Jesus and he was talking on the regeneration of the soul in this gospel of the holy 12 so I'm going to drop this on here and then I'm going to come back and do the Malachi on another video because uh, I don't want to make too long of videos you know that um, Jesus sat in the porch of the temple and some came to learn his doctrine and one said unto him Master, what teachest thou concerning life? And he said unto them, Blessed are they who suffer many experiences, for they shall be made perfect through suffering. They shall be as the angels of God in heaven and shall die no more. Neither shall they be born any more, for death and birth have no more dominion over them. They who have suffered and overcome shall be made pillars in the temple of my God, and they shall go out no more. Verily I say unto you, except ye be born again of water and of fire, ye cannot see the kingdom of God. And a certain rabbi, Nicodemus, came unto him by night for fear of the Jews and said unto him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus answered, it was Jesus answered, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again of the of flesh and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The wind bloweth where it, where it listeneth, 
and ye hear the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it come or whither it goeth. The light shineth far, shineth far from the east, even unto the west. Out of the darkness the sun arises and goeth down into darkness again. So is it with man, from the ages unto the ages. When it cometh from the darkness, it is that he hath lived before. And when it goeth down again into darkness, it is as he may rest for a little, and thereafter exist, and thereafter again exist. <clears throat> so, through many changes must be made perfect. Oops, left out a word. So, through many changes must ye be made perfect. As it is written in the book of Job, I am a wanderer, changing place after place and house after house until I come unto the city and mansion, which is eternal. And, and Nicodemus said unto him, how can these things be? And Esus answered him and, 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 Esus answered and said unto him, art thou a teacher in Israel and understand it not these things? Verily which is truly, we speak that which we do know and bear witness to that which we have seen and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you of earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? No man hath ascended into heaven, but he that descended out of heaven, even the son, daughter of man, which is in heaven. Uh, um, I would tell you guys, you see this son, daughter, this is what, when I first read this, I, I had no idea that the Megillah, the book that I've been putting on my channel, even existed. And it talks about um, the Lord and the Lady Christ as being the first begotten son and daughter of the Most High, Jah and Jala. And, um, it doesn't Christ in the New Testament, what you're going to see if I put when I put some more of the New Testament sermons on to this channel, you'll see that when Christ, Yahshua is Christ in this New Testament that I'm reading from the Holy Megillah, you'll see that when he speaks, the next person that talks in his sermons is Mary of Magdalene. And there's not, there's rarely a sermon where he's only give he, where it's only him speaking, um, and that's what the Megillah is shedding light on in the New Testament that um, the Christ was not just a man; he had his um, it calls it e eternal consort, which was the Lady Christ, which was Mary, the Magdalene, and um, that's going to be. Like I said, all of the videos that I'm going to be putting up from the New Testament are going to be shedding light on her and that how she was uh, the mother uh, of us all and how it's um, been kept out. So there's one more part I want to read, but I really didn't want to make this video too long, but I, I, I need you guys to... Uh, Look at some more things that are going to give you um, a broader view of some of the writings that are uh, that were that were you know some of the writings from from the time of Christ and them on the earth. So. All right, um, this is it. I'll put a link down there in the bottom and then I'm gonna, I wanted you guys to read this. Maybe you guys could pause the video and read this on this video. It's uh, amazing. And it is a second witness now, which would have been my first witness to about the animals and what's happening with the animals that we're, that, that, that we need to, need to focus on um because it's not just the megillah this one i'm trying to say there was other writings from the time that um 
they were trying to show us that these animals, they share with us the one breath of life. And uh, even Jesus said this here, are not five sparrows sold for two farthings and not one of them is forgotten before God. So, and it does mention him and Mary right here. Would it not seem to us like a blasphemy if we were to hear it and said that Jesus or Mary would have beheld without pity or succor the ill treatment of helpless animals? Nay, certainly when our Savior brought redemption to a world sunk in selfishness, hard-heartedness, and misery, and proclaimed the gospel of an all-embracing love, there was surely a share in this redemption for all suffering creatures. Since man opened his heart to this divine love, there was no room left for pitiless hardness towards the other creatures of God, who have, like man, been called into life with the capacity of enjoyment and of suffering. They bear the marks of the Redeemer who practices this all-pitying love. And how little is it that the minimum of Christians, of Christian compassion for helpless creature demands of us only to inflict on them no torture and to help them when in trouble or appeal to us for succor and when of necessity we take their life to let it be a speedy death with the least pain, a gentle sleep. But alas, how little we penetrated, how little are we penetrated with these divine lessons of mercy and compassion? How many grievous tortures are inflicted on helpless creatures under the pretense of science or to gratify an unnatural appetite or cruel lust of the promptings of vanity. As an aid to higher Christianity, these fragments of a fuller gospel are now presented, giving us the feminine tenderness and the masculine strength of the perfect Christ. Yeah, I, 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 I'd advise you guys to look, start looking, start researching about the books that were left out of the King James Version. All right, thanks for watching.